and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. Today, I'm gonna be shooting another vlog and sharing with you how I go about blocking my shawls because I don't know if you can tell, but I just finished binding off my Miss May MCAL shawl. Uh, this again was a mystery knit along hosted by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And yeah, no more spoilers. The, the clues have been revealed and you know, cats, cats out of the bag. I, I finished her literally today, finished binding off and I'm ready to block. And I thought I would share my blocking process because I don't think I've ever done a vlog where I share how I block my shawls. And I feel like shawls are a different animal compared to sweaters, whereas like sweaters, you just soak them and lay them flat to dry usually for the most part. With with shawls, you're talking about lace. So they kind of have to be blocked rather aggressively and you need special tools to do them. So if you are new to shawl knitting or you know you have been blocking shawls for quite some time and just want to see someone else's method behind the madness, <laughs> uh, you are in the right place. And I want to apologize if my teeth look gross right now. I just got back from the dentist about an hour ago and you know, no cavities, clean bill of health, everything's fine, but they gave me a fluoride treatment. So my, my teeth feel a little gunky right now and I have to let this sit on my teeth until six hours have passed. It's really gross, guys. I apologize. So I'm, I'm gonna try really hard not to smile, but I don't think it's gonna happen, so. Anyway, that's, that's what's happening in the oral situation. I do wanna point a few things out though, because uh, if you've seen the, the reveal, you know that Helen Stewart's border is just a plain simple, uh, I, I wanna say like four by one twisted rib, just a simple, clean, wide border, but I decided to add a little a little extra pizzazz uh, just because I felt like it, I don't know, for me personally, I just kind of wanted to add a little uh, Pico bind off action <laughs> to mine. So uh, hopefully this shouldn't be too much of a headache to, um, to block out. But the other thing that I'm noticing is that it wants to roll up onto itself. <laughs> and that is because if you flip this over to the wrong side, for the most part, this is all stockinette stitch with one, one rib down the center every four stitches. So uh, if it weren't for these twisted ribs right here, this would all be pure stockinette. And if you don't know, uh, stockinette has a tendency to wanna roll up on, into itself or onto itself. And sometimes that's a desired look. It's, you know, design element. Other times you're gonna wanna finish off stockinette with, you know, a couple rows of garter just to anchor it and keep it flat. But I'm feeling pretty confident that this is going to block out pretty straight. So let's get started. Hello, and welcome to my kitchen. I think this is the first time that I am actually filming in here. So, you know, here, here it is, while in all its glory and while it's still clean, uh, not messy and, and, and all that good stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna fill this tub up with lukewarm water and some soak. I have soak over here. This is the soak that I use and I absolutely love the way it smells. It's a Rapture by Kristen Omdahl. It's lanolin enriched concentrate with jasmine oil. So delicious, guys. Um, highly, highly recommend. Not sponsored. Now I'm just going to pop this in here and let it soak for 10 minutes, although I do have to dye yarn, so I might let it soak for a little bit longer, but 10 minutes is usually sufficient. If you're working with 100% wool, you wanna be a little careful. You wanna to avoid too much friction or abrasion. You just wanna gently press it down. But since we're working with <laughs> super wash, we don't have to have our kitten gloves on. Many hours later. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is setting, but this is the brightest room in the house and, and perfect for blocking. I mean, <sighs> It's great, it's great. Uh, so my shawl is over here. It's done soaking and I ran it through my spin dryer so it got out all the excess water. Uh, so less blocking time, but that also means I've gotta be pretty quick when it comes to, to actually pinning everything in place. But uh, I'm just fitting together my blocking mats. These I purchased on Amazon for about, I think a six pack is about 40 bucks US. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link in the description box below, but these are great. They're easy to store and I've had them for years and they've lasted for quite some time. So this shawl in particular is not, is not a schlanket, thankfully. So it's not Stephen West proportions. Uh, so I don't think I need this many blocks, but it's always good to have more than not too many. So I'm just gonna drape it 
diagonally because generally the way it works out is that I block it diagonally across the, the mats. So, because yeah, shawls are super long width wise for the most part. And uh, so it looks like we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make it with this one. First things first, I'm gonna get out my blocking wires. And these I got from Knit Picks, I don't know how many years ago. I think there are about eight in here, but I think two, two should do the trick. Um, I think they give you more in case you're making one of those rectangular uh, shawls or scarves. And typically I like to start at the center point of the shawl at the top, at the cast on, uh, and just weave in my blocking wires. Don't rush this because this in itself is a process. <laughs> so put on a podcast, put on some music, a movie, and just enjoy. Here's what it looks like with one wire woven in along one side of the edge of the shawl. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be straight or even, just make sure that you know your weaving is somewhat consistent. Uh, we'll get to the evening out in just a bit, but right now I'm gonna grab another wire and weave in the other edge. And typically when I do this, I like to overlap it with the previous blocking wire. So, you know, just maybe like one or two inches. And again, just weave it in and out of that other edge or the I-cord bind off in this case, like so. And you don't want to, you want to be careful, especially if you're working with delicate yarn because the blocking wires, you know, while they're smooth for the most part, they can snag on your yarn. You do want your wires to be sticking out somewhat from the edge of the shawl uh, because we're gonna, we're gonna be blocking this rather aggressively. So I think we're, we're all good there. Um, and I still have some, slack in the middle that I can pull out if I need to. Uh, so yeah, now I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Okay, we're all good and yeah, let's get pinning. I have my handy dandy little T-pins. And if you're not familiar with what T-pins are, they're these uh, T-shaped pins and they just make blocking shawls and other knitted garments a lot easier. You can see them, they're not gonna get lost and, and all that jazz. So very visible, which is very important. Basically, we're gonna start at either tip, like at either edge. Lots of crawling around too. So um, we're gonna come over here and pin it. And I just like to start pinning along the straight edge. I underestimated how wide <laughs> this shawl was gonna be, so um, I'm just gonna tack on this extra blocking mat. This blocking mat, I actually cut up from one whole blocking mat just to add little modular bits whenever I need to. For example, this case. <laughs> so now I can continue uh, just pinning and blocking as, as I need. And pull that out, there I go, okay. Mischief managed. Hey, voila. And there we go, we're done. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, so now that we have our straight edge all pinned out, uh, again, this, this can be modified later if we need to, but as long as we have our straight edge identified, we're, we're good to go. We're ready to go on to the next step, which is continue pinning, but from the center out. So I'm gonna start pinning. You can, you can eyeball this. I guess it really depends on the complexity of the lace, but this seems pretty straightforward. I'm gonna skip that first pink section up here and just go straight to that second edge right there and start pinning out. When you're dealing with lace, you definitely wanna be rather aggressive just to open up all that lace work and show it off. Cause you put all that work into it. You're really gonna see the pattern start to take shape. Look at that, look how beautiful. And I'm noticing that I have some excess fabric bunching up over here. So I'm just gonna start unpinning. So just to the center of where these guys are. And then open that up a little bit. And you know what, this is okay. If it's not completely straight, I just wanna make sure that stretched out as much as possible, so. Okay, it's like that, so be it, that's fine. And again, 
just gonna do the same over here just because I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do it anyway. <laughs> Bring that all the way out. Two days later, I did not unpin my shawl yet. Yesterday was crazy. We had the roofers back to fix something on the roof. And yeah, I did not get to shoot my my shawl. I didn't get to take FO photos. But today is the day. We're going to unpin it. We're going to take some photos, get it up on Ravelry, get it up on the gram. It's going to be an FO. I, I did gussy myself up today so I could take some photos, FO photos. So I'm going to unpin this hop outside because it's gonna be a scorcher. My goodness, I think it's supposed to get up to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so we're gonna make this as quick and painless as possible and then hop back into the AC because it's a hot one out there, guys. If you're in the UK, oh my gosh, how are, are, are you guys okay? Are you all right? Because we hear, we hear things are quite quite hot there. Uh, I hope you're all right, staying hydrated and cool. Uh, but that said, let me, let me start on pinning this. Let's take out the wires. Let's pop out like that. Pop out like that. And there we go. It's blocked. I am so happy with the way this blocked out. What do you guys think? The border has some teeth to it, which is expected because of the Pico bind off. Uh, it seems a little more toothy over here than over here, but honestly, I'm not, I'm not terribly terribly concerned with that. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Ta-da! Look at that. Yep, no pins. Pins are all out. And ta-da! Oh, it's so pretty, guys. Look at that. Guys, I... I'm so happy with the way this turned out. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, do you have any shawl blocking tips? Uh, I know there are many different other techniques out there, different tools, but let me know in the comments down below if you have any other tips and tricks. I'm sure other people would love to hear them. Uh, but yeah, that, that is how I block my shawls for the most part. I'm gonna head out, get some photos. Wish me luck because it is, it is gonna be a hot one today, guys. Uh, I hope wherever you are, you're staying cool, staying hydrated. If you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments below. If you haven't already, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm putting out videos for your viewing pleasure every week. And until the next one, have an amazing weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye.